arm's length reporting for investors who want the whole story. This is the Corlin Economics Report. Okay, here to start off the second hour of the weekend edition of the Corlin Economics Report. Got my buddy David Morgan with me. David, for your new, the new listeners, uh, is considered to be probably the foremost silver guru in the world. He's a very, very interesting guy. He's an old friend of mine. I've known David for the last 10 or 12 years or so. If you want to find out more about what he does, go to our favorite site section on our homepage and then click on his banner, which is there. He has a great website called silver-investor.com. David is also a frequent speaker on an international level, uh, both in the Far East, Europe, uh, North and South America at various conferences. So this is a guy who knows what he's talking about. I want to address a very interesting comment that was sent by one of our listeners, a fellow by the name of Bart. And Bart says, there's no need to even consider the precious metals sector any longer unless the pattern of lower lows and lower highs gets reversed uh, in the uh, in the mining sector, uh, I'm not I'm not sure that I completely agree with that. Bart, in another comment, uh, went on and he said from from someone who he feels is an authority, um, he says the bottom line is that in a very choppy market with no discernible trend, the only people making any money in this kind of environment are day traders, and that's if they are lucky. Uh, like most people, I can't make money in a volatile whipsaw market, so the rational thing to do is step aside until we get either into the timing band for an intermediate low or a steady trend develops. I don't agree from a fundamental standpoint, but then again, David, my horizon is much longer term. I, I, I don't buy precious metals or precious metals-related securities uh, looking for short-term profits. What does David Morgan say about all of this? Well, thanks for the opportunity. First, uh, let me address the technicals, and I'll come back to the fundamentals. Uh, On a technical level, um, I called a bottom in the mining equities uh, recently, like the middle of uh, May, and um, so far it looks like I'm correct, and I'm certainly not going to pat myself on the back. Believe me, the market's humbled me several times. However, from today's interview, uh, the HUI bottom about 372. We're currently about 380. Um, the one I use the most really is the GDX or the GDXJ. Uh, the GDX uh, bottomed again at the same point in time, and it bottomed at uh, about 38, excuse me, 3908. <clears throat> Currently we're around 40. The GDXJ, which is leveraged, bottom at 1737, and we're currently at 18 right now. And uh, again. Time will tell. It's too early to say that's the bottom. So far it is. And that's the bottom in this intermediate term. In other words, this isn't the bottom from the beginning of the cycle. This is the bottom since it's been consolidating over the last year plus in silver. And we peaked in gold around over the 1900 level in September of last year, so I haven't quite gone a, a, a year in gold. There's several approaches. I mean, this gentleman, Bart, uh, obviously has a pretty good background in technical analysis. And he's got to make his own decisions, and I honor that. The other side of the coin is, for the average investor that isn't a technician, or even if they are, it's a strategy situation to me. And that would mean, what approach are you going to take during this consolidation? What I've been saying to to our members is to go ahead and continue to buy in. This is a low or bottoming formation. It is taking a while, and it probably will continue for a while. But you want to buy low, sell high. And people are afraid to buy or they're going to wait for the correct technical indicator or what have you. I think it's better to take a professional's approach, and that means to buy in during this time frame. Now, obviously, this time frame may be too long for everybody that's very short term, and I understand that. I can't do everything for everyone, nor do I know how everyone thinks, trades, etc. Coming to the fundamentals, Al, it's probably never, ever, ever, been a more important time to be in physical metals than there is right now. Uh, in my life's work, basically, as much as it revolves around silver, and it does, the bigger picture is the monetary system and the history of money. And we are in a situation that we've never been in before on a global basis. There are things falling apart left, right, and center. And in that case, you want to much rather be six months too early or six years too early 
than six minutes too late. And I want to emphasize that. It sounds a bit odd if you haven't heard it before. Many people use the same statement. But what it means is if there is a bank run, a banking crisis, a computer glitch, a flash crash, I mean, any of the things that basically we've seen so far and some we haven't, you want to be able to touch something that you know is outside of the counterparty risk domain. You don't have a broker to call up and sell. You don't have a bank account you have to write a check against. You don't have to go to an ATM machine. You want something, and that varies in amount. I am not a doom and gloomer per se, but I'm a realist. And the real situation today is that if you don't have precious metals, you really don't understand what's going on in the world. You know, I have to tell you, I agree a thousand percent. You know, I was uh, chatting with... uh with Ron Hara about this from Hara Research uh, in an earlier segment, and Ron made a very interesting point uh, when he said that he has never in his lifetime seen economic conditions like this. I mean, there are so many uh, what I would call emergencies going on, not the least of which is the LIBOR scandal, the J.P. Morgan loss that goes on and on and on. Reminds me of what Bob Moriarty was talking about from 321 Gold, was talking about four or five years ago about how the derivative situation would ultimately uh, lead to major, major uh, financial chaos around the world. I personally have been around for a long time, been in this industry for 35 years, and I have never seen more frightening times. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that people should, uh, you know, uh, go into the storm cellar? Does that mean that people should sell everything and buy gold? Does that mean, you know, what does it mean? Uh, I personally think that what it means is people need to be really, really well informed, and then they need to do what's best for them. What we talk about on this site is what we're doing, okay? We're not telling other people to do anything, but we're saying this is what we're doing. In my case, my wife and I have diversified. You know, we're involved in metals, we're involved in metal stocks, we're involved in big board stocks, and we're also involved in real estate. The odds of all four of those sectors going south, uh, to me, are slim and none. But, I mean, I don't know. I I agree with you, David. This This is the most precarious that I've ever seen it. And that's the point. I think if you're, you know, long term in this market, you can average in during this consolidation, this indecision pattern, call it what you will. And if you're uh, already bought in to your position some time ago, even if it's above where the current price is, I would just say hold on. Yeah. And not everyone needs to be involved to a great level. I mean, when I wrote the 10 Rules of Silver Investing, I said that 10% asset allocation was probably plenty. And it probably is. I have upped it uh, to 20%. But uh, Ibbotson Study, which is an independent research facility out of uh, Chicago, Illinois, did a portfolio analysis and said in current conditions, 15% is the right allocation for metals, not metals or mining stocks, but actual physical metal. And they don't break it down as far as gold and silver. They just say precious metals. But I think so in that ballpark, and if you have that, I mean, a lot of people don't think that anything is going to get much worse than it really is. And you know what? They could be right. I admit that. I doubt it. Uh, I've studied too long and too hard, and I really think that the trend is so clear that things are going to get worse before they get better, especially, I think, if they can hold this thing together through the election, which I have my doubts, that there will be a time by the probably you know Christmas time or the end of the year 2012 where a lot of people that are on the fence or undecided will make a very strong decision that they've got to, one, start looking after themselves, not worry about uh, who gets elected or who's going to take care of them. They've got to take care of themselves, and that's going to spill over into the metals, I think, probably in a very big way. So I'm looking for 2013 to be a very big year for the metals. I don't disagree. With you. you know, Roger brought up an interesting uh, an interesting point in the, in the first hour of the show. He said, you know, the situation in Europe is so precarious right now. Everybody thinks it's fine because everybody thinks that uh, – that uh, Ms. Merkel has has acquiesced and that Germany is going to help bail everybody out. But the fact of the matter is uh, the German the German uh, Supreme Court has not ruled on that yet, and they're not going to rule on that until this fall. And let me tell you, Roger's feeling is that they're going to rule negatively against that. And if that's the case, as far as Europe is concerned, Katie, bar the door. you got 20 seconds, man. you got the final word. All right, well, if you're interested in my work, go to themorganreport.com and sign up for our free uh, e-letter. It comes out every Saturday. It talks about uh, 10 Rules of Silver Investing. You get if you initially sign up after that, we take a question a week, and we give you a lot of good insights into these markets. It costs you very little. Actually, free. There you have it. Okay, David, thank you so much. Thanks. We're going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen. 